Hi, welcome to Storytime with Jackie. I'm Jackie. I will be reading The Youngest Marcher by Cynthia Levinson, illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. The story of Audrey Faye Hendricks, a young civil rights activist. Whenever Mike flew into town, Audrey and her mama cooked barbecue ribs, stewed greens, sweet potato souffle, and Audrey's favorite hot rolls baptized in butter. Other folks knew Mike as Martin or Dr. King. The Hendricks used his nickname. They did the same with other ministers too, like Fred Settlesworth and Jim Gable. After Mike blessed the feast, Mama expected Audrey to keep still during supper, but when grown-ups talked about wiping out the segregation laws that kept black and white people apart in Birmingham, she just had to speak up. Audrey intended to go places and do things like anybody else. I want to eat my ice cream inside Newberry. I want to sit downstairs at the Alabama. I don't want hand-me-down school books. But stools at the counter, plus movie theater seats, look so fresh they'd crackle when you open them. Those were for white children. Huts, hissed Mama. Nine-year-old children should not speak in front of company, especially ministers like Mike, Fred, and Jim, who were bringing dreams of justice. Audrey knew all about segregation. She knew to pay the driver at the front of the bus then step off and walk around to the back door. Drink from the fountain with a dirty bowl and warm water. Use the freight elevator at department stores downtown. Front row seats, pool water, elevators with white gloved operators. Law said those were for white folks. Every Monday night, Audrey and her mama and daddy and her aunts, uncles and cousins joined neighbors and friends at Fred's church for worship, fellowship, and testimony. She sang and swayed along with the movement choir. Her voice spirited and spiritual, black and white together, we shall overcome. For once, she didn't have to keep still. Then came testimonies. Whites only. White store owners won't hire me. Coop Kluxers chased me. Policemen called me names. The hateful stories made Audrey squirm. She tried to tell her mama. That's not right. How can Mama expect her to hut? She had to make things right. But what could she do? When Mike visited Fred's church, thousands of people crowded around her to hear him preach. In a voice as taut as steel cables, as smooth as glass, he intoned, Segregation is mortally wrong and sinful. That's, that's true. Fired up, Audrey sat taller. An unjust law is no law at all, he proclaimed. Audrey had listened to Mike explain his plan at her supper table and knew what he meant. If a law is, un- is unjust, disobey it. Sit down inside Newberry's. Picket those white stores. March. To, pro- to protest those unfair laws. Why, even marching was against the law. Then get arrested. 
Fill the jails, Mike exclaimed. Fill Birmingham's jails. So full that policemen can't squeeze in one more person. Pack cells so tight that police will have to quit arresting people for demanding their rights. Old Trinches knew Mike's plan would work. She twisted in her pew to see which grown-ups would walk down the aisle, volunteer for jail. But they mostly stayed put, eyes staring at their feet, hands on their knees. Feet, hands, and knees didn't move. Fill the jails, Mike pleaded, meeting after meeting. But head shook. All around her, Audrey heard, No, best not break those segregation laws. Bossmen will fire me. Landlord will evict me. Policemen will beat me. If nobody protested, Mike's plan would fail. Police could keep arresting anyone, anytime, for anything, forever. Audrey would never be able to, to go places and do things like a everybody else. One night, Jim announced a new idea. If grown-ups won't do it, fill the jails with children. Audrey leapt to her feet. I want to go to jail, she declared. Mama looked deep and saw that Audrey's eyes begged. Please? Okay, Mama said. Audrey strutted down the aisle. She was going to jail. Two mornings later, they put on a fresh pressed pinafore and shiny Mary Janes with turned down socks. Protesters got to look look nice. In the meantime, Daddy brought her a game to help her pass the time in jail. Her mama and daddy took her up by Center Street Elementary to tell her teacher she'd be absent maybe for a whole week. Miss Willis wrapped her arms around her. Audrey knew she was proud of her. She said goodbye to her grandparents. You'll be, you'll be fine, her grandmother said. She knew Audrey would be brave. So did Audrey. Then her mama and daddy drove her to 16th Street Baptist Church, where the children were gathering. Even before she reached the door, Audrey heard loud voices chanting freedom songs. Inside, hundreds of big kids called out friends and crowded around signs for their high schools. Parker, Carver, her head swiveled. Where was a sign for Center Street Elementary? She was the only protester from her school, the youngest child in the whole church, and she knew no one. Audrey huddled by her parents in the basement. But when Jim lined her up with the others, Two by two, and the door swung open. Audrey straightened up. She was going to break a law and go to jail to help make things right. Clunching a protest sign in one hand and her game in the other, Audrey marched out the door. She stomped and sang, Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Half a block from the church, a white policeman stopped Audrey. He pointed toward a police van. Sentence one week in juvenile's hall. A matron locked Audrey into a day room with two dozen other girls, all older, all bigger, all strangers. Audrey sat down alone and slipped the cover off her game. I told you to sit down, 
the major yell. Audrey jumped. She didn't remember standing up. The matron dragged her to a dark, empty room. When I tell you something, you do it, she commanded, or I'll leave you here. Trembling, Audrey quietly followed the matron back to the day room, put away her game, lied down her head, and cried. Jill was harder than she thought, and she wasn't fine after all. By evening, Audrey was hungry and tired. For dinner, soupy, oily, tasteless grits. At night, a bare mattress with one thin seat for a cover. The next morning, uh-oh, no fresh underwear, no clean pinafore, no toothbrush. Audrey and her soulmates were let outdoors into an empty concrete pen surrounded by high prison walls. The older girls talked together. Audrey wondered what her classmates were doing. Miss Willis would be keeping them busy. On another day, Audrey was sent to a huge room and told to do sit in a chair that was so high her feet dangled above the floor. Four white men glared at her. She never talked to white men before. Are you against America? One demanded to know. No, sir, she answered politely. What do you talk about at those meetings? Another asked. Our freedom. Why did, why did you march? To go places and do things like anybody else. What was wrong with that? Every mealtime, Audrey stared at greasy grits. She could barely spoon them into her mouth, let alone swallow them. Every night, the cot's wire strings jab. Every morning she had nothing to do but sit alone with her with her game. In the afternoons, the morkers crowded into the day room. Some days many of them arrived sopping wet. A girl explained that firemen aimed powerful hoses at the children. Surging water spun them off their feet and down the street. They got up and kept marching anyway until they were two were sent to jail. By Audrey's fifth day in detention, the police couldn't squeeze in one more person. We filled up all the rooms. We filled up all the rooms. Audrey practically jumped up and down. She was so proud. Watching television in the day room, she saw black people stroll straight into stores and restaurants like they belonged there. No one else could be sent to jail. Everything had changed. After seven days, Audrey went home. Her mama and daddy wrapped, her, wrapped their arms tight around her, washed the jail off her, and for dinner, hot rolls baptized in butter. Two months later, the city of Bur Birmingham wiped Segregation laws clean off the books. Audrey licked her spoon clean at Newberry's counter like everybody else. 
black and white together like we belong. The end. Thank you for joining me.